what makes a person bad his actions his motives his conscious decision to be a bad person or his brain because at times maybe it's just a brain's fault तीनों लोगों का बेरहमी से मर्डर हुआ गुरुवार को अपहरण हुआ था को सुसाइड के लिए चार हत्या कर दी थी भारत में हर 16 मिनट में एक हत्या जलाने का आरोप नेशनल क्राइम रिकॉर्ड ब्यूरो की सालाना रिपोर्ट में सामने आया है ये चौंकाने वाला सच According to the records of the National Crime Records Bureau, in 2013, around 3 lakh cases were reported that were violent in nature among the heap of cases that go unreported. In this crime-ruined society of today, where information, good or bad, is just a click away, justice enhanced with science tries to uncover and solve all such cases. And with it comes the recurring question of why the people who do such hideous crimes do it in the first place. countless studies tell us about the reasons and causes of such crimes a pattern emerges following the lines of bad past criminal environment poverty etc do all of these things can really be solved but there is one reason on which no one has control not the society the victim or the criminal himself the physical or biological condition of the brain Most people among us have a basic idea of wrong and right and they know the difference but for a small but not that small subset of the population things are very different these people lack remorse and empathy and feel emotion only shallowly in extreme cases they might not care whether you live or die these people are called psychopaths some of them are violent criminals murderers but by no means all The difference between a psychopath and a run of the mill criminal is one of scale. Psychopaths commit lots of crimes. They don't grow out of it. They simply get better at it. Yahan se kahin hilna nahi. Agar yahan se kahin gaya na to jaan se maar dunga. The brain is an incredibly complex organ. Parts depend on other parts to function. Areas are entwined and re-entwined. The brains of psychopaths and such criminals commonly have less gray matter in the prefrontal cortex which regulates impulse control and decision making. They are more likely to have a development brain defect. Cavum septum pellucidum and the striatum is enlarged. The area that processes rewards Studies have found that two parts of the brain's frontal lobe are significantly smaller in psychopaths, and on average, psychopaths show 18% reduction in the volume of the brain's middle frontal gyrus and a 9% reduction in the volume of the orbital frontal gyrus. A study of psychopaths also found that a portion of the amygdala, a piece of the brain important for human emotion, had a volume of about 18% less than what you would find in a normal person. Thus researchers have found that they lack the fear conditioning that causes the rest of us to be afraid when we know something bad is coming. This lack of anxiety over the future and the consequences of their actions can make psychopaths very dangerous criminals. Even the neurotransmitters, the brain chemicals that communicate information throughout our brain and body, 
for example serotonin and dopamine are in fluctuating and imbalanced amounts in the brains of psychopaths is it always the fault of the criminal yes even though some brains are raised in darkness but maybe some brains are darkened even before they are born Nature versus nurture has always been a huge debate among criminologists but there is research to support the idea that many criminal brains are genetically prone to aggressive or illegal behavior some criminals are a product of the environment coming from abusive homes or bad neighborhoods but a large number of murderers were raised in relatively conflict free households the deficits in their brains were a trait they were born with and gave them a higher likelihood of becoming violent criminals This not to say they were forced to commit these crimes but their brains were more inclined to them than the brains of average humans it also explains why criminals from loving wealthy upbringings can commit horrible violent crimes in 2014 the population of inmates living in jails across india was counted at 4,18,536 which is 117.4% of the maximum capacity of inmates that the jails can keep this count has increased by 65% since 2000 this causes a large burden on the government which we can't afford easily in a developing country thus we need to redefine the way we handle criminals and must find better ways to stop crime and we establish criminals and the most important of all we must learn to differentiate between criminals caused by nurture and nature because if we keep spending our resources at the wrong places it just does not cost us valuable time and money but many valuable lives at least in that way we can make our country better and prove the same incredible india